Hey everyone, so today we're going to be covering a question type you are 100% going to see on your upcoming SAT exam. And that's going to be those questions where you're given a table or coordinate points and you have to create a line out of it or determine characteristics like in this problem where we have to find the y-intercept of y equals f of x. Except this is quite a complicated example because instead of just having this, these coordinate points represent f of x, these coordinate points actually represent g of x. And g of x is just f of x except it's undergone a transformation right? you can see g of x equals f of x over x plus 3. So how exactly do we solve this problem? Well, first off, we know that we're given x values, right? So wherever these x values can be plugged in for g of x, that also applies to f of x, right? Because g of x depends on f of x. Therefore, if we were to write this out, we can write g of Let's just pick any one of these points. Let's just do the top one, right? Negative 27, 3. So the x value here is negative 27. So we know g of negative 27, whatever that is, is going to be equal to f of negative 27. And then because it's dependent, g of x, then we have x plus 3. So x in our case is going to be negative 27. So you have negative 27 plus 3. Now here's the thing, because in our table we get values of g of x, right? So g of g of negative 27 can be also be rewritten as just 3, right? It's right there in the table. So 3 equals f of negative 27 over negative 27 plus 3. So if we write this out, we have f of negative 27, boom, and then negative 27 plus 3 is just going to be negative and so now we can just isolate for f of negative 27, right? So we 3 times negative 24 is going to give us negative 72 equals f of negative 27. So you might be wondering, why did I just go through this entire process, right? Well, here we've just given ourselves one coordinate point, right? f of negative 27 equals negative 72. That is just coordinate point of x, y negative 27 comma negative 72. And we know for slope, if we're trying to find the y-intercept, as long as we have two points here, we can determine that because it's a linear function, right? So if you find two coordinate points, we can then create the equation for it and then therefore determine the y-intercept. So this entire process here, we just have to replicate again with any one of these points. I'm going to use negative 9, 0 here. So we know g of negative 9 is going to be 0. So I'm just going to skip the top step here and write 0 equals f of x. x here we know is negative 9. So f of negative 9 over, we have x plus 3. We know x is negative 9, so negative 9 plus 3. And would you look at that? Whatever we do here, it doesn't matter. That's negative 6, right? But when we multiply 0 by negative 6, we still get 0. And so 0 equals f of negative 9. That's our second coordinate point. So here we're going to write, boom, so this is our x value, so negative 9, comma, 0. So now we have our two coordinate points. And these coordinate points are representative of our linear f of x function. So what do we do now? Well, we can go through it algebraically to determine the uh, y-intercept, right? But you can also use Desmos. If you watch our other video on problems you can crush using Desmos, this is a great example right here. So if we scroll down, you can see here what I did is I created a table with these two uh, coordinate points, right? So negative 27, negative 72, and then negative 9, 0. I just plugged it in, into a table, and then I set up a regression here, a linear regression, because they told us f of, uh, f of x is a linear function. And therefore, I set this linear regression up, and it tells me that y-intercept. Our b value here represents the y-intercept, and tells us that b is 36. And therefore, we can determine that the answer choice will be A. The repellents contain natural components that work by activating multiple odor receptors on mosquitoes and tenna. As the insects develop resistance, new repellents are needed. Kidong and her team found that EBF, molecular component of the flower extract, can repel mosquitoes by activating just one odor receptor. And this receptor, OR31, is present in all mosquito species known to carry diseases. Very cool. Therefore, the researchers suggest that in developing new repellents, it would be most useful to what? And the question asks, which choice most logically completes the text? Pause the video and try to answer the question by yourself. 
So the correct answer here is going to be A, all right? So why is it the answer choice of A? Well, because you have to think. So it is stated in the thing that the, it's this um, EDF, right? This molecular component from the flower is very effective at repelling mosquitoes. Now, why? Well, it's because it specifically activates that OR31 receptor, right? Which is common to all disease-carrying species, as is stated in the text right here. And so the next logical step for researchers who want to develop new repellents, because um, if you have this EBF that targets OR31, that's cool and all, right? But they can, the mosquitoes can like develop, you know, resistance, right? So you're always going to need to develop new uh, repellents. But when you develop new repellents, you want the ones that will affect the most mosquitoes at once. So if all the mosquitoes have this OR31 receptor and you can create like one repellent that works on all of them, that's cool, right? So now the next step is to find, you know, or like invest in repellent development to find similar molecules to the EBF that would also just target the OR31 receptors because the OR31 receptors are in all mosquitoes, right? Because if you find like 50 different alternatives, uh, just like EBF, then you can make 50 different repellents, right? And then you can stave off the mosquitoes for a lot longer. So that's why A is the correct answer. Let's look at the other answer choices. B says investigate alternative methods for extracting EBF molecules. Um, not the correct answer here because the passage focuses on developing new repellents. It says, therefore, the researchers suggest that in developing new repellents, right, not just relying on the EBF molecule, so it can't be B. C says verify the precise location of OR31 and other odor receptors on mosquitoes' antenna. That's incorrect because while, like, OR31's, like, presence is important, the passage still, you know, they want to develop new repellents, not continue to study um, these different types of receptors because they know, okay, OR31 is this one receptor and all these m mosquitoes. That's cool and all. We don't need to, like, find new odor receptors on the mosquitoes antenna. So that's not the choice. And D says determine the maximum number of different odor receptors that can be activated by a single molecule. Again, passage, you know, the passage is talking about developing new repellents, not, you know, also, also, it's talking about targeting one odor receptor, which is OR31, and so that is like the foundation of building new repellents. And then this answer choice D is talking about the maximum number of different odor receptors. Um, so we're not trying to maximize receptor activation or the number of receptors we're activating. We just want the one that's widespread in, in every single mosquito, and therefore it can't be D. This question says a salesperson's total earnings consists of a base salary X dollars per year plus a commission's earning of 11% of the total sales the salesperson makes during the year. All right, so let's just write this out. So the salesperson is going to make a base salary of X, and he's going to get on top of that 11%, so we'll just express this as 0.11 of the total sales. So the total sales, let's just call it S. Okay, so it says this year the salesperson has a goal for the total earnings, so this value right here, the total earnings, to be at least three times and at most four times the base salary. The base salary, remember, is the value X, which the following inequalities represents all possible values of total sales S in dollars the salesperson can make this year in order to meet that goal. And so we just have to write our inequality out. So I'm actually just going to erase this and write our inequality so we know that has to be at least three times the base salary so wait, 3x is less than or equal to our total uh, earnings and at most four times the base salary so that's going to be less than or equal to 4x all right so now that we're looking at the, our answer choices none of them actually line up right c is similar right with 3x and 4x but it just has s in the middle whereas we have x plus 0.11s. Therefore, in order to actually get an answer that matches up with one of the answer choices, we need to simplify this inequality. So here, very simple, we can just subtract x on all sides, and we end up getting 2x less than or equal to 0.11s is less than or equal to 3x. And now again, we want to isolate for S because you see in all these answer choices, S is by itself in the middle as the uh, total sales. Therefore, we can just divide all sides by 0 0.11. So we get 2x over 0 0.11 
is less than or equal to s less than or equal to 3x over 0 0.11. And we can see that this answer choice right here lines up directly with answer choice B, and therefore that is our answer. Blurb here says Swahili is estimated to be the first language of up to 15 million people worldwide. It's also the officially recognized language in Tanzania, Kenya, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which means these countries use Swahili in government documents and proceedings. But even in countries where almost everyone speaks Swahili, for many it isn't their first language, but is instead their second, third, or even fourth language. Okay? So make sure you have this table in mind when we read the question, which says, which choice most effectively uses data from the table to support the underlying claim? Okay, so those are your answer choices. Keep those in mind. You need to support the underlying claim, which is right here, but even in countries, to even for language. Okay, so pause the video, try and answer the question on your own. And yeah, so the answer here is going to be A. Okay, Tanzania has approximately 61 million Swahili speakers, which is much more than the estimated total number of people worldwide for whom Swahili is their first language. Okay, so you can see here in the table, it says approximate number oops approximate number of speakers and millions is 61 million in tanzania um so it's estimated that 100 percent of their population speaks swahili and the claim here is that even in countries where almost everyone speaks swahili so i mean 100 percent. i mean that's like almost anyone almost everyone right so that fits that part of the claim and the second part is that for many it isn't their first language but is instead their second third or even fourth language Okay, it says Swahili is estimated to be the first language of up to 15 million people. So worldwide, there's about 15 million people where Swahili is their first language. But in Tanzania, where everybody speaks uh, Swahili, you have 61 million people. That means you have millions of people who, you know, sure, know Swahili, but it isn't their first language. It must be their second, third, or fourth language. And therefore, A here is our correct answer.